Madagascar is a dream island. The beauty of its landscapes and the friendliness of the locals are particularly appealing. Unfortunately, the country's economy is very fragile. Although no one wants for food, the standard of living is one of the lowest in the world. To kick off this tasty escapade, my first stop is Nozi Bay, the very popular big island in the north that boasts the most prosperous economy. It's difficult to cultivate the land, and the Indian Ocean is not easy to tame. Hellville is the capital of Nozi Bay, and I am meeting someone at the town's market. Leonie has been living in France for many years, but she often returns to her native island. Oh, there's Leonie. It must be Sunday. Yes. You're preparing a meal? Yes, a family meal. You're doing the shopping with one of your nieces? That's right. So, where are we? I know we're in Hellville, of course. Yes, we're in Hellville, in front of the roundabout there, and this is the very big market. How many markets are there in Hellville? Oh, three. That's the Bay Bazaar? Yes. There is another bazaar a bit further, and another one at the edge of the city, over there. I know that food shopping is very important for people here and that they come to the market regularly, sometimes even daily. Oh, yes. Uh, they come daily to make sure that they buy the freshest products. Also, well, not everyone has a refrigerator and can stock ingredients, so they shop every day on a daily basis. I see. And what can we buy at this market? Can we find everything we might need? Yes, you can find anything and everything here. Even baskets and wicker, absolutely anything. How's the market organized? I know we're about to visit different sections, but how's it laid out? Is it by zone, by section? Well, the fish section, the meat section, poultry. Yes, it works like that. Here's what I suggest. Leonie, I'm going to leave you to start your shopping and prepare your meal. OK. I'm going to walk around and we'll meet up later. Shall we meet up inside? That sounds perfect. OK. See you later. See you soon. The women, their faces decorated with beauty masks, are doing their Sunday shopping. I'm not worried about losing Leonie because the market isn't very big. Over to one side, I can see the butchers and their displays of meat. Oh, that's sharp. No, there's no problem. I'm a top quality professional. What kind of meat is that? Zebu meat. Do you know the difference between zebu meat and beef? Are they the same? Yes, they're the same. The same quality? The same quality as beef, yes. What kind of cuts do you sell? By weight. One kilo pieces. One kilo, including bones, costs 5,000 ariari. One kilo of boneless meat for kebabs is 6,000 ariari. Zebu meat is expensive. It costs more than fish, doesn't it? Yes, it does. In Madagascar, zebu meat is more expensive than fish. What are the most popular cuts? The favorite cut is sirloin. That is the best cut. Sirloin, with no other pieces mixed in, is very expensive. 10,000 ariari per kilo. How do people prepare their meat? Is it boiled? Grilled? What do they do with it? Here in Nozibi, it can be grilled, braised, or in a Romazava broth, with lots of greens, anamami, anamalao, and manioc greens. That's very good. Zebu is prepared just like beef. Meat is for a special meal. For most Malagais, it's rare to eat meat even once a week. Here's a Zebu recipe. It serves two, and these are the ingredients you'll need. Chef Nesta will be making this dish for us. He starts by cutting the zebu meat into small cubes. Of course, you can replace the zebu with beef if you like. 
Then he prepares the marinade, which will add flavor to the meat. He peels fresh garlic and chops up three cloves. He does the same thing with the fresh ginger. He adds the soy sauce, the oil, and seasons with salt and pepper. He takes the two tomatoes and cuts them into chunks, and the two green peppers, and an onion. Nesta mixes up all the ingredients with the zebu meat. He lets the meat sit for about 10 minutes. While the zebu meat is resting, Nesta prepares the akar, a traditional Malagaise dish of pickled vegetables. All sorts of different ingredients can be used in akar. This one will be made with green papaya, peeled and sliced into long, thin strips. He douses lime juice on the papaya, then peels and chops an onion. He does the same with a tomato. He then adds a generous dose of salt and pepper and pours in a little oil. Mix it up a bit and it's ready to go. Simple and delicious. To make it a bit more colorful, he chops up some scallions and throws them in. It's time to make the satay sauce, which is of Asian influence. He chops up the remaining onions and a small tomato. He puts the mixture aside. The meat has been marinating. Nestor assembles the skewers using sticks of coconut wood. First, he takes a piece of zebu meat, then a piece of green pepper, followed by tomato and onion. The skewers are done. Time to cook them. The satay sauce needs to be finished. He sautés the chopped onion and adds the tomato. One minute later, he adds the grilled peanuts that he's ground in a mixer. The mixture cooks for another minute, and then a half glass of water is added in. Another two minutes of cooking, and the sauce is ready to go. It's time to put the skewers on a hot grill or barbecue. The meat is cooked medium, and the kebabs are ready to be served nice and hot with the satay sauce and the green papaya akar on the side. The Malagais are the biggest consumers of rice in the world, and cinnamon rice will accompany this dish. Nesta plates the meal in a lovely serving dish. Time for a taste. But not just yet. We're back in Hellville in the Nose Bay market, the big bazaar. All the fruit and vegetables are grown locally. Some come from the big island that's an hour's boat ride away. The one thing there's never a shortage of is rice. It's the Malagais staple food. Its simplest serving form is with vegetables and extra strong peppers. But then there are the many varieties, with zebu meat, with fish, with salad. 75% of the land is cultivated as rice paddies. So the Malagais eat lots of rice, an estimated 135 kilos of rice per person per year. Another ingredient in the orchid family contributes generously to the economy of northern Madagascar, vanilla. It's much less expensive at the Hellville market than it is back home. So this is one of the most famous locally produced ingredients in Madagascar. Tell me, how does one choose vanilla? This one looks very fresh. There is fresh vanilla and there is the dry kind. If you want fresh, this is good. It's good like this. And what do I do now? Do I let it dry out a bit? You can take it like this. You take it to France. You can leave it at home. Then you cut the string and leave it to dry in the air. Okay, how long should I leave it to dry for it to be perfect? If it's very dry, two or three years. You take a piece. Yes. It can be kept for a long time. And how do you sell it? How much is in that package? Is that 500 grams? We sell this one kilo for 40,000 ariari. Right. 
That's about $17. Do you eat vanilla sometimes? Oh, yes. What do you use it for? Desserts? Oh, it can be mixed in whiskey. Or in rum. You can also eat it in cakes. Or in tea. In many things. Thank you very much. Have a nice market day. You have lovely vanilla. $17 for a kilo of vanilla. Incredible. Compare that with the price of one vanilla bean in your local shop. Painful, I know. I must go and find Leonie in the fish section. Ah, I see Leonie. So, Leonie, you're negotiating away? Indeed. I am interested in these little emperors here. Those are emperors? Well, the little emperors and the little red fish here, and the daisy fish. What are daisy fish? Well, this is what we call daisy fish. Show me the daisy fish. Very sought after, here. Oh, I see. Is that because they're daisy shaped? Oh, no, it's because... Well, actually, I don't know where the name comes from. The colonials called it that. Tell me, Lenny. It doesn't have scales. Fishing's very important here in Nosy Bay, right? Oh, yes. We have always lived off fishing. You know, we still fish in canoes like in the very old days. Well, you know, wholesalers, they buy the fish directly from the fishermen, just like before, and they, then they resell it at the market, for example. And people fish in the mangroves, don't they? Yes, but the problem is that there are less and less fish in the mangroves today. Tell me, how do people like to prepare their fish? Do they fry it? Do they poach it? Do they, uh... Fish can be poached in broth, Ramazava style. It can also be fried. Uh... Is fish more or less expensive than meat here? Is it easier to eat fish? Yes, meat is quite expensive here. What's everyone's favorite kind of meat? Zebu? Definitely zebu. We have lots of zebu. I don't know of any other meat here. What about chicken? Oh, chickens. It's not safe to be a chicken around here. <laughs> well, practically every Sunday we kill a chicken. And when we invite guests over, traditionally we sacrifice a chicken. Well, I'll leave you to your shopping. OK. I'm travelling quite a bit, aren't Very I? Very good. Let's meet up later. Yes, yeah, see you soon. I'm off. I'd like to introduce you to a lovely little fish recipe, a fillet of pompano steamed in a banana leaf with a fresh fruit compote. Here are the ingredients needed. Nesta will start with the banana leaf. The trick is to heat up the leaf in order to make it more pliable so it won't tear when folded. The leaf's then cut into two nice rectangles. He cuts plump fillets from the fish. He chops the garlic and lays it on top of the fish. He gives the onions a rough chop and slices the tomatoes. He then slices the lime and the leek. Nesta seasons the fish with two teaspoons of salt and pepper. He pours soy sauce and olive oil over the preparation and mixes it all up. He places a piece of fish and some vegetables in the center of the banana leaf and sprinkles some olive oil on top. He then folds the leaf and secures it with a bit of raffia. And we're off to the kitchen where Nestor has taken the rest of the seasoned vegetable mix. He's added more soy sauce and a half liter of water to make for a nice steaming broth and to ensure that the fish doesn't dry out. He puts the fish in an oven preheated to 200 degrees centigrade. While the fish and the vegetables are being steamed inside the banana leaf, Nesta moves on to the fresh fruit compote. This is easy to make. He peels the mango and cuts it into slices. 
Now for the pineapple. And the banana. He cuts that diagonally. He chops up the garlic, cuts little tomato cubes, and chops half an onion. It's time to make compote. He'll be working with a big skillet. He's heating up a bit of sunflower oil. The pineapple goes in first with some salt and pepper and the tomatoes. Then the mango. The banana slices. And lastly, the chopped onion and parsley. This should cook for no more than two minutes. The fish is now ready, and so is the compote. It's time to serve. This recipe proves once again that the simplest things are often the best. Nesta has presented this dish with the banana leaf open, but I recommend leaving the discovery to your guests. They'll enjoy uncovering the wonderful smell and the multicolored content of their little package of Malaga's cuisine. Well, the morning has flown by and there are few remaining customers in the Hellville market. As in all markets around the world, this is the ideal time to negotiate the best prices. I must find Leonie again. Earlier she mentioned mangrove and she's promised to show me an animal that lives there, a local delicacy. Oh, I think that's her over there. Are those your ingredients for your traditional lunch meal? Yes, I have everything. I've decided I'm going to serve crab after all. And what'll be your Sunday dish, do you know? We'll make a romazava, some rice. There's always rice and crab as the main dish. Crab stew with a little rumours of all on the side and a few spicy acca varieties. What is Romazava? Romazava is a sort of broth. It helps digest and cleans the palate. It's water-based. Like a little soup, you mean? Exactly. Can you show us a Romazava? How does it work? They seem to have only one big claw. No, here is two. This one has two. You need to be careful, don't you? They do pinch. Yes. Well, that's quite a specimen, and it's very... Is there a lot of meat inside? Yes, indeed. It is very good. You have to know how to pick them. There are males and females. And the males... Are better than the females? <laughs> they are. <laughs> they go well together. OK. How can you tell them apart, then? The females often carry eggs, what we call a coral. People like the coral? Yes, it's a delicacy. So how else can you tell the males and females apart? You look underneath. You see this one here? This one is a female. Yes, absolutely a female. OK, I see. Oh, she's looking for a male. This one's a male. OK, I can't tell the difference, but... The base is smaller here. Oh, I see. There you go. Leonie bought two mangrove crabs for her family meal. Like everywhere else in the country, it's rare to have a refrigerator in Nosy Bay. Therefore, meat and fish products are cooked as soon as possible. This is not the case with fruits and vegetables. Hello? Hello? So you sell fruit and vegetables? Mangoes, papayas, pineapple, oranges, lemons. That's right, there's a lot of choice. Let's take these mangoes, for example. Is it mango yes, season mangoes right are now? in season. Mangoes are a common ingredient in meals here. They're also a dessert. This is obviously a pineapple. This is a strange-looking fruit. What is this? Ah, booze. Baobab. Oh, it's a baobab flower, I see. But no, it's not the baobab flower, but the baobab fruit, sometimes called monkey bread. Its juice is very tart. It contains antioxidants and twice the amount of calcium found in milk. Its grilled seeds are delicious. Follow me a few hundred meters from the market to one of the neighborhoods near the center of Hellville. Rita and Joby are preparing Sunday lunch. They chose to make a crab dish, just like Leonie. 
They'll be making the famous mangrove crab curry. The women cook in small ovens that use wood coal. These mangrove crabs also come from the market and have since been washed and rinsed in clean water. They've been carefully cut into pieces. Some oil is heating up on the stove. Once it's very hot, Rita throws in the pieces of crab. She's kept the claws aside. She's prepared a coolis of onion and tomato that she adds to the crab. Greens have been boiling in a large pot, and Rita and Joby have picked morango leaves, which will accompany the crab claws. Let's check on the crabs. They put on some water to boil. Then they add some tomato and onion. A little salt. And the morango leaves, which bring a tart flavor to the dish and aid digestion. The crab claws are added once they're cooked. Meanwhile, Joby has prepared the rice, but you already know how to do that. The crabs are now fully cooked. It's time to taste this wonderful recipe that's a popular choice for a Sunday family meal. It's rare to have several tables for dining. Therefore, meals are traditionally served in one big communal dish from which everyone can sample the hostess's delicious culinary preparations. Crab does require a minimum of technique and patience in order to get all the meat out, but it is so good once you succeed. Let's go back to the Hellville market one last time. While Leonie finishes up her shopping, I want to take in all the colors and the smells. Vanilla mixes with citrus, mango and guava. Scents of curry play with the aroma of green pepper and cinnamon. Thousands of sensory memories and emotions, not to mention wonderful food cravings. This is quite convenient since Leonie has promised to take me to sample some traditional cuisine. One last purchase before the stands close down for the day. We're going over to the little food stalls where lots of local dishes are simmering away. There's rice, of course, but other things as well. Oh, Lenny. What a surprise. I see that there's enough rice to go around. Oh, yes. Well, shopping makes you hungry. And the Malagais like to eat. Yes, they do. That's fine by me. So what are we going to eat? We will have some traditional rice and uh, manioc greens, manioc greens in coconut milk with zebu meat. There's a little bit of zebu meat in it, OK. Here is some akka, mango akka. It is always served with our dishes. OK. It is an essential condiment. Thank you so much, Leonie, to have taken me on this trip through the Hellville market. My pleasure. Let's eat. Yes. We should eat and we must finish our shopping as well. See you soon. So what do we start with? With the rice? Do we mix in the meat? I'm curious about that. Wait, I'd like some meat. That's really good. Tastes a bit like spinach. Should your travels ever take you to Madagascar, do not be surprised if the head of the family throws some rice on the ground before the meal. It's meant to summon divine grace for you. I put some grains in my pocket as a souvenir, and who knows, I might return one day. Maybe. <laughs>